climber, it's not enough to get in the room with a co-writer. You want to get invited back into the room by your co-writer. And today, we're revealing what not to do. Yes, here is how you might be annoying your co-writers and shooting your career in the foot without even knowing it. Yeah, buckle up. It's going to be fun. Johnny, do that thing. Welcome to the climb! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business we want you to win and that's the secret creating leverage you make all the miracles happen up front and everybody you want to work with is going to come out of the woodwork and bow down at your feet and try to work with you and we ran into a couple of those this week didn't we that's right yeah and writing sessions <laughs> like you know people making stuff happen yes um so super fun, man. That's why we call it the climb, C L I M B, creating leverage in the music business. That's a Baxter from a good friend and co-host, Mr. Brent Baxter, who's also a hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady A, Joe Nichols, and more. He's got number ones in Southern Gospel. He's got top tens on Texas radio. He's got top tens in Australia and uh listen a little under the uh, 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 behind the scenes stuff it's got some stuff happening in Europe too coming up shortly so uh fingers crossed on that fingers one crossed. what you're what you care about is that Brent wants to help you the songwriter succeed by revealing how you write like a pro do business like a pro and on the regular he gets you opportunities to make relationships by putting you in front of the pros that can help you climb that ladder. And you can find Brent very easily at songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinnell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. They're breaking artists digitally by identifying new fans through data. It's complicated, but he's smart. If you're an artist looking to increase your stream, hey, by the way, not only is he smart, he's smart because he does testing. That's right. He tests things and tries things and learns yeah. things and applies things, which you can get value from. Anyway, uh, if you're an artist looking to increase your streams, blow up your video views, sell more live show tickets, and get discovered by new fans, TV, and music industry pros, then Daredevil Production can help. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Hernan, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at DaredevilProduction.com. That is production singular, no S, and there's no S because there is no other Johnny D, although he could use a couple. Right now, I need a couple of two tree of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. You're talking about testing, like all kinds of fires we're trying to put out. But um, the different kind of test, yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. But, um, man, um, what a great week having you up here. That was good. Got thank you. Yes. Thank you for uh, thank you for the room and board. While thank I you for the Uber gift, that. by the way. That's oh, just Janelle was beaming. She's like, this is the perfect thing he could have done. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we well, like to go out and have a couple of cocktails and we Uber. <laughs> right. I was like, if there's any couple I know that needs Ubers, like that's the gift for them. That's it's a perfect gift. Absolutely. <laughs> right. yeah, thank you. That was very sweet. Well, you're helping me go places. I want to help you go places. I love you are. You're helping me get home. <laughs> helping me get back from places. <laughs> and what peace without a DUI? Yeah. <laughs> so really, it's self-serving. If if you die in a car wreck, I have no place to stay. No, That's I right. have to stay yeah. further out. You. You're like I tried. I tried. I tried. I did what I could. I'm looking out for you, brother. <laughs> so uh, how not to annoy your um, co-writers? Yeah, or how to thing. annoy them? I thought we'd just take the opposite approach. Like here's how to yeah. annoy them. You might not know you do these things. You might, sweet, that's me. I check off three of the five or whatever. You're like, no, that you don't want to check any of these boxes. These are yeah. how to annoy your co-writers that you may not be uh, knowing that you're doing. But yeah, man, it just, um, I've done some of these things and I've been in the room and people have done some of these things and we just, we want you to win. So we're going to point out the things that you should not be doing today. So a lot of them are simple things. Hopefully you're not doing any of these. Hopefully you skate right through this episode and you're like, None of them. I'm not doing any of these things, which is awesome. And hopefully by the end of this episode, you'll be like, I'm not going to do any of these things ever again. And that will be a win for you as well. So that's what it's all about today. There you go. I love that. And, you know, listen, there's two ways to approach this. I feel like one is, uh, you know, here's how to know your co-writers. Ask me how I know. Right. And you can <laughs> approach it from that angle. Or you can just learn this yourself. <laughs> and you know, you get, burn a couple bridges, like, uh, you know, yeah. you can, you know, and all the damage that comes in the wake of that, or 
they can really, really listen to this with an open mind and be like, okay. And, and you know what? You have to be intellectually honest with yourself. Yes. Honest, and right? emotionally honest. With <clears throat> yeah. There you go. Hey, All right. So learning from, learning from your own mistakes is gold. Learning yeah. from other people's mistakes, platinum. Yeah, that's right. That's right. There you go. So, um, and you know, because listen, 2020 hindsight is always 2020. So why not see clearly through this information than yeah. having to figure out yourself? But yeah. that said, I know still going to be a lot of people that are like, I know what I'm doing. And exactly. They're going to go screw it up. But anyway, before we do that, let's take care of a little business. Join the climb community at, at, uh, on Facebook, which is the facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash climb community. No forward slash the climb community, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And you have to ask to be let in. We let everybody in unless you look suspect and then we won't. And, and that really just comes across like if it looks like a fake account or yeah. if it just, you know, if the account was just created two weeks ago, uh, we don't want people in the feed selling friggin', uh, drywall you know, siding. Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Um, so anyway, uh, listen, we, this is a, a thriving community. You're going to get a lot of love, a lot of support, a lot of information. I try to post when I come across articles that I think are going to be of value to the community. I, I, I try to remember to post them in, in the climate community and other people are doing that as well, which I love. Mm -hmm. And we encourage that, that kind of information articles, you got funny stuff or like yeah. mind blowing yeah. musical videos or something like sometimes I'll run across like this guy, this one guy, that one bass slap guy with the, that the, was just ridiculous. You know, and I was like, yeah. okay, this just, this is just awesome. And you have to put that in there, but which is not your own amazing mind blowing musical stuff it's somebody right, else. Right. yeah that was somebody <laughs> else's yeah and i am just like like look at this this is crazy cool right but for your stuff um we got a place for that too and we just want yeah. you to answer you know put it in the right place it's just you're always going to put your stuff as a comment that's the easiest thing to remember mm -hmm. where what are you commenting on on mondays we have um new music mondays you can put your yeah. new music there on wednesdays we have wednesday wins on thursdays we got gig alert like you know we want to hear all of that stuff. And believe me, everybody's going to comment on it and love it. They're going to yeah. not love it. If you put it in the feed, they're going to love it. If you put it as a comment. So if you want love, put, put it, it in as the a right comment. Spot. If you want to be divisive, <laughs> put it, put it in the feed and see how long that right. lasts. <laughs> but, uh, speaking of some wins, what we got going on? Yep. So every, uh, like Johnny mentioned, every Wednesday we do the new heights post. And so you're, it's where we invite you and encourage you to share your music related wins for the week. And again, we love it when it's there. It's not braggy. You're just, you're just answering the question that we ask. What, what was a win for you? And so you're not being all, you know, braggy. We want to see it. And I love that yep. people are hopping on here and uh, giving each other at a boys and at a girls. Yeah, we're life. axing you. We're axing you. Exactly. It's invited. So <laughs> all right, a couple of these. Aaron Michael says, last year I had the pleasure of meeting Brent Baxter at the Bernard Ebb Songwriting Awards, and it was just announced that I'm a finalist for this year. The concert and awards will be at the Straithmore in Maryland on April 12th. Gulp, it's a big venue. So grateful for all I've learned from this community that has helped me on the climb. And so she has a, a Facebook link there, which is completely appropriate in the wins. And so, yeah, I, Aaron, congratulations. I did, uh, you know, of course, she and I have like been in contact online for a while, but it was nice to bump into her at the award show last year. She was attending uh, where I was, I was one of the like judge host thing, which was a whole lot of fun too. Uh, so it was good to see her and I won't be there this year because they ain't paying me to come back, but um, you know, she's going to be performing this year and she's one of the finalists. So that's a good feather in her cap. Cause like everybody last year was, was really good. So it speaks well of her that she's a finalist this year. So good job, Aaron. Congratulations, yeah, Aaron. I love yes. that. Let's see. We got another one here from Climber. Patrick Adams says, release my first song as an artist. Navigating this realm is quite hey. the learning curve, but I'm glad I've got the climb people on my side. Let's keep on climbing. So, and he put a link to his, uh, to his single, which is called Out of Time, parentheses, Raw and Real by Patrick Allen Adams which is appropriate because it's the spot where you should put that stuff, Patrick. So congratulations and good luck on the, uh, on that climb, Patrick. Love that. Yeah. So people making waves, people doing stuff. 
I, I got, I got, I got a win time. and I got, I got a shout out. So, um, I will, I haven't posted this yet. I will post it. Um, cause it just dropped Wednesday night. It, it premiered, but, um, we did the music video for Mackenzie O'Brien's sugar daddy issues. That's right. I co-produced. I also directed the video and it turned out really good. It's Dude, it is cool. good. I meant to bring that up as a win. Cause, um, it's a good video. Like it's, it's fun. It's funny. Mackenzie yeah. did a great job. Like she like packed so much personality. She's exploded stuff. on the screen, man. It's oh, like so it good. Was, so good. I was like, oh, awesome. I was telling my, uh, I was telling my intern this morning. Cause you know, I fill her in on like new stuff that's come out and I've not met McKenzie in person yet. Like we've zoom written and yeah. I've not seen her show. Right. So I've not yeah. seen her live. And so in the writer's room, it's like a little different vibe. You know, you're in the sandbox, you're creating and stuff. And so, you know, you kind of see one side of her. And then in the video, it was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like way more personality. Like she's a sweetheart in the writing room. I enjoy working with her and she's good and she brings stuff. Uh, but it's like a different vibe on the video, you know? And I was like, oh, okay. So, which is uh, always a lesson, like, like reminds me of my buddy, Aaron Goodwin, like he and I'd been writing in the writer's room for, you know, a good couple of years. And then when, I, then I went out to see a show and I was like, uh -huh. Oh, okay. I get it now. So it's fun when you can see your, your peeps in different elements and see them pop and like, I didn't even know that layer was there. That's cool. They had another gear. So anyway, <laughs> Johnny, the video, so much fun. And uh, good job. So much fun. That. And so, so a, a couple, couple, two, three shout outs here real quick. So yes, uh, part of that video we shot up in Chicago, uh, mm -hmm. in two different locations. And, um, what, one of those locations was like just a friend of mine that I went to high school with, who's like a big, like real estate, like luxury real estate agent up there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and she doesn't listen to climb her. Uh, so she's cool as hell. I'm, I'm not shouting her up, but she hooked us up with like this one house that was like really cool, beautiful house. Yeah. And, um, and then, uh, at the, the hair salon that she works at, we, we mm -hmm. shot there. Uh, it, but we also shot at SIR. She was down here for her sister's wedding, I think. And, and they were like, should we shoot some stuff down here? I'm like, yes, let's get SIR. And that day, I mean, this happened like last minute. And I put out the the signal, put up the bad signal because I needed yeah. some players to be in the video. And uh, man, Johnny Matt and Braden. Um, mm -hmm. Gosh, I'm forgetting Braden's last name right now. Um, Johnny Matt and Braden showed up with um, to, to be in the video, which was like super freaking awesome. And yeah. Braden, I'm sorry, I can't remember your last name right now. Um, <laughs> God, it. I, well, ah, I feel like an idiot. But. but yeah, that was fun. I remember that uh, when that happened. Of course, I, I wasn't able to be there either. But um, Braden Barry, Braden Barry. Yeah, there we go. Braden so, which so, so they're me. in the video, and they got like these old man masks on. It was funny. So, it's like Zach. So uh, this week, Zach was in the writing room too, like working mm -hmm. my co-producer. And I'm like, hey, man, I, I got the video done. Did you see this yet? He's like, no, I didn't see it. And it's watching. He's like, man, like, I mean, this is cool, dude. He goes, but we got to get some like younger guys in her band because that looks really bad. I'm like, dude, they're masks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all like, a, and it's exactly the same mask like that, yeah. that her dad got, which is like really cool. So, uh, but it worked really good. Yeah. So those guys did a great job, man. I wanted to shout them out and throw some love on them. And, um, yeah, so check out that video, man. Mackenzie O'Brien, uh, O-B-R-I-E-N. It's called Sugar Daddy Issues. Blue Foley, Brent Baxter, Trick Savage, and Mackenzie O'Brien wrote it. And uh, just turn it. It's a, it's a different song, man. It's different. It is different. It's, 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 it's different. It, 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 <laughs> it's super cool. And, and I'll, I'll kind of start it from her saying, like, maybe we should just, you know, I'm cleaning toilets at a freaking uh at a hair salon and i'm trying to uh you know scrape by and, and do this thing as an artist maybe we should just be taking pictures of our feet on only fans and and yeah. making money <laughs> you know so it's, it all kind of sprouted from there so let that take you to where you want to go uh and, and then the <laughs> final thing is so and and good job Mackenzie. i mean like she just really showed up for this and yeah uh, i promised her i promised her before we shot the video i'm like this is going to be the coolest thing you've ever done you know, yeah. and she shot the videos, you know, 
But yeah. like this one, we just had a, a, a really, I'm, I'm really proud of this. So I want to brag about it. Like I, we just really had a great connection, you know, and she mm-hmm. trusted me. And so she yeah. really just popped on screen. Like she came yeah. out, like I would be like, try to do this or try to do that. And I, I didn't say that even a lot. And she just kind of like went for it and really made yeah. it count. It looks really good, man. We had a really great time doing that. Our family's great. Everybody's just so, so sweet. And then one more shout out. I just, uh, Pamela Mary, who's a, um, climber that yeah. just like before we hopped on today saw her drop just a little piece of this song that she wrote called taken down giants and I, I think that's what's called taken down giants and uh, i just want to shout her out because i was like like it's a tearjerker oh and wow. it was just a a snippet of i gotta send it to you brent like it's a snippet of the song and she was lip syncing it and it was like wicked good i, I just threw some love at her so i just want to say good job that's a great song her voice is beautiful and and uh, y'all need to check out that song pamela mary awesome all right let's get to it ways to mm-hmm. annoy co-writers um i had a, a a great know the pro event it's a songwriting pro like members only event over at songwritingpro.com and so i bring in industry pros on a pretty regular basis for like q a and so this most recent one we had kirby smith of riser house she's like uh she's does a and r and publishing over there so she's like label side and publishing side like label side you have mitchell tinpenny uh megan patrick dylan carmichael so they're they're rocking and rolling over there so brought her in uh just getting to know her and let the songwriting pro community ask her questions but she talked a lot about on the writing side like getting back into the room and investing she she said a great thing she i love the way she put it. she's like don't just invest in the session, invest in the relationship, mm-hmm. you know, which is I awesome. And so that just kind of, you know, spurred invest me to think about in the relationship, stuff. not That's just the t-shirt. session. <laughs> yeah. That's a hat. I'm like, yes, so true. So super, super packed with uh, good information. So if you're a songwriting pro.com member, you can go log in the members area. It's under our know the pro section in the members area. It's worth the watch. If you're not a member, well, you know, we got a 14 day free trial. You can go in and, there you can watch it. So yeah. Anyway, um, you go in and, and wheeze the juice, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Carl oh, sure. for bringing the heat. Um, so a lot of these, I'm I'm pulling from my own experiences and, and stuff, and what I've seen, what I've heard about, what I've done. Unfortunately, probably some of these. And so ways to annoy your co-writers. So these are things you want to avoid. Landmines you do not want to step on. Uh, we're going to break it up into two parts. We got during the right and after the right. Okay, ah. So. Yes, you can annoy them even when you're not there. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. All right. So, during the ride, uh, number one, man, show up late and be unprepared. No gear, no ideas, no song starts, no respect for their time or abilities, you know? So, that's yeah. that's the thing. If, like, where's so-and-so? They, they, you know, hey, we all, Nashville traffic, it's going to happen. It, it'll get you, you know, eventually. but especially, you know, first, first date kind of things, you know, you don't want to show first impression late. first date. Yeah, yeah. First impression is better to be five early. It's so much better to be five early than five late. Uh, just because one thing it's kind of rare, but, but if you want to know people have them sitting around wondering where you are and wasting their valuable time. The other way is showing up with like no gear. Like I left my guitar in Fairview or whatever. Like, how'd yeah. you do that? Like, it's just your job. Do you not realize you're coming to work today? I, got, I love it when you're leaving for? Show, show up for the first day at Daredevil. And I'm like, did you bring your computer? They're like, oh, no. I, I didn't bring it. Or, or they show up for an interview. For an yeah. intern interview. I'm like, did you bring your resume? Oh, no. Like, this is an interview. Okay. Yeah. Like, so right now you go in this pile over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you do kind of go in a different pile. Uh, yeah. You know, you may be able to get away with some of that stuff if you're like coming in and you're Lori McKenna. And you're like, somehow there, you know, the airline lost my guitar on the way to you know coming in from boston or whatever you're like you're laura mckenna it's gonna be all right if you're if you're new and they're like you just oh you're the person that just doesn't bring stuff and forget stuff so that can be annoying because like oh now maybe if you're writing with someone like me like now we don't have an instrument in the room or we got to go around we got to try and scrounge one up same thing for like capos and laptops and chargers and just all that stuff like if you bring it you're not getting extra points for it, but if it becomes a problem because you don't have it, then it's like, ah, oh, okay, here we go. Then but you're losing a boatload of points. 
then you're losing points. Exactly. And there's an emotional right. bank account that is now uh, overdrawn already. Yeah. <laughs> now we're starting in the hole a little bit. Like, this is not starting off great. Uh -huh. uh, and the other thing is, and even, you know, so most of the time that doesn't happen, but what was more likely to happen is like, you got any ideas? No. Got any grooves, any song starts? No. What? This is your job, right? So you can be a big win if you if you bring the great stuff and do your homework. And it can be annoying if you don't. Uh, you know what? I, I, okay, so this sounds like duh, 101 type yeah. crap. But can I just share? No, this is like, this happens. Like you said, bring the gear, right? Um, so I'm going to tell you a story right now. I'm not going to mention any names. Mm-hmm. I'm going to mention yeah. some names, but not the disparaging name because I'm yeah. disparaging somebody <laughs> yeah, right not now. The, but like, the, like, yeah. like disparage alert. <clears throat> um, I was doing a record with um, I can't remember who's. I think it was. I think it was Alora's record, and Michael Wagner was producing it. Mm. 105 Legend. million records producer. Yeah, Ozzy, Alice Cooper, Skid mm -hmm. Row, Queen. Uh, he mixed Master of Puppets. He mixed Look What the Cat Dragged In. I mean, like, like, like he's the soundtrack of the 80s. Like, for sure, yeah. he produced it, you know. And luckily, become a good friend and, and a guy that I just really admire. And there is a hit songwriter mm -hmm. that just our paths happened to cross because of some certain situations. And uh, this guy's, I mean, he's had, he's an artist, too. He, mm -hmm. he, 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 uh, Although he's not like hadn't been on the charts in a while, but hit mm -hmm. songwriter, you would know his name in the music industry. And I just was like digging, like he was playing me some of the stuff that they that he recorded for his record. And I was really digging the vibe on the guitars. And he's I'm like, who did the guitars on this? Right. Cause I'm I'm kind of casting for the yeah. session for Laura's record. And he's like, Man, that, that that was me. And I was like, shut up, dude. And and then so I had some other stuff going here. It was like at his publishing house, got a pub deal. And so I'm like, do you want to play guitar on Laura's record? Like Michael Wagner's producing it. And he was like, what? Like, <laughs> like yeah. And he's like, yes, you know? Yeah. And so we make a deal and um, he shows up at the studio, at Michael Wagner's incredible studio as the guitar player. And doesn't bring an effing pick. <laughs> now, <laughs> so you talk about starting off like Michael, like already he went to this pile over here. Michael hates him, right? Already, yeah. like, and and uh, it, I mean, Michael Wagner has produced George Lynch, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Vito Brada, like guitar virtuosos, Nuno Betancourt. I mean, Zach Wild, like guitar gods, yeah. guitar. Yeah gods you know yeah. and it's like what the uh, dude what uh, and he just yeah and it just started off bad and mm -hmm. i'm having to fire him because oh my uh, god he's also he showed up high uh, yeah and i'm pretty sure like he got inside his head with michael right yeah like he was freaked out that he's gonna work with a legend yeah i think maybe he was like all about it like at the publishing house and then when it came time to show up for the session it, it, like he yeah. all of a sudden he's like i'm over my skis right now i don't know what to do and yeah. i get a call from michael and he's like johnny you need to come down here like uh, i think i think we need to switch out guitar players i'm like what's going on you know and he's like it, it's taken us all day to do one guitar track and and literally <clears throat> i mean it was bad enough how long it took him to kind of craft the performance mm -hmm. and the arrangement of the guitar. When I showed up, he was trying to double it. So this is a rock record, you know, yeah. he's trying to double the guitar and he keeps missing the chords. Like he just, it's right there. Like he just yeah. got to do what's on there. And so like, if you've done a lot of recording, you know, like, okay, doubling can be tricky to make it yeah. really tight. You really got to be a play. I'm not talking about that newest. No, he keeps missing the freaking A chord on it. And I was just like, holy crap and and michael's like looking at me like you know can i fire him and i'm like yeah yeah <laughs> let's go i said i'll fire him you know but i mean yeah. that, there it is man like showed a bad taste you know like bring your gear uh, don't be high and right and and and, and don't like, it's okay to be over your skis yeah you know it's okay to to, to be in over your head like that's I want to be in those rooms where I'm over. Yeah. Like it, 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 get rooms. comfortable with being uncomfortable, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I made a career out of being the dumbest guy in the room. You know, yeah. it's like, 
because you learn. So anyway. But especially like if you're the kind of the, the new person, you know, lower on the totem pole than the person you're riding with. So yeah. like you get that opportunity with the pro and you show up and you're like, good, they're going to have great ideas or they're going to have stuff. They don't need theirs. Why are no. you in the room? You're in the room because you better be bringing something. And so and, and here's a situation where this guy yeah. had that really had the, I believe had the chops to do it. But I think in his mind, mm -hmm. he, 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 he let it spin out. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But and, so that's a different thing. Like, yeah, bring your pick. Uh, Cause it, especially if you're playing on a record, not just any old pick will do. You have your, you have your, your picks that you pick for a reason. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So bring, bring your stuff, show up on time, show up prepared. Well, oh, so, so one, 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 one more thing on that. Like okay. Michael has in his studio, he has a big, huge bowl of picks. Yeah. Right? He, yeah. And they're from like George and Vito and all these guys he's played with. And so like, I'll go through and just smell them and look <laughs> at them. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, this is amazing. So, I don't know what's worse that this dude didn't bring the friggin' pick yeah. or that he thought it was okay to ask Michael for a pick instead of like, there's the ball, just grab it when Michael's yeah. not looking and play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't give it away, man. You know what I mean? Like, dude, <laughs> yeah. What the hell? <laughs> That's funny. All right. Number two, bail early and abruptly if you can. Okay. So in other words, like, oh man, by the way, I got to, I got to bail at noon. We just, you didn't get here till 11. <laughs> like, what am I doing? Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff is, is annoying. If, if I'm riding with somebody and then all of a sudden they're like, oh man, I got to go like in 30 minutes or like, boom, I got to suddenly bail out. You're like, what do you, first of all, do you hate me? Or why yeah. did you schedule this? If we only have like an hour or two hours, like this is something I should know ahead of time because that affects my day. That yeah. affects my day. Cause like, oh, maybe I could have bumped another thing earlier. Or maybe we shouldn't have done today at all. Or what am I going to do for the next hour or two? Whatever, in between sessions. You know, it's just that kind of stuff. So you want to yeah. give it, you know, and talk to people like, hey, what kind of time? Or if you got to bail at like some weird time, just let people know like, hey, I got to, you know, because I just came in. So I had rights. Uh, I'm pulling doubles, you know, all last week. So I'm letting people know. Okay, you know, hey, can we start at 10? Because I got a three. A lot of people like to start at 11 these days for some reason, which kind of annoys me. I'm like, all right, but, you know, so I got a three. So I got to bail like at 2.45 to get over to pier or to curb or wherever. And yeah. you just want to communicate that ahead of time. And especially if it's like, if you got to go early, it's just annoying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can't be helped. Sometimes you're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, my wife just called. Something happened. The dog got bit in the face and we got to, I got to meet her at the vet. She's freaking out. I mean, stuff happens. All right. We try not to let it happen, but it happens sometimes. Okay. But if it's just like, oh, you just didn't plan your day very well. That's not very considerate. That's a good way to yeah. annoy your co-rider. Okay. <laughs> so show up on time. Don't just all of a sudden bail. Uh, number three, not being there when you are there. So you're late, you're out, show up late, you're out early. This is, you're not really there when you're there. So that's like checking your phone, social media, you know, social media stuff, taking calls, telling too many stories or off topic stuff, like chasing way too many rabbits, that kind of stuff. Now, a lot of people, we will have our phones on us because a lot of people, maybe they're doing the, the Google doc on their phone or they're, you know, putting the lyrics in the notes app. And that's cool because yeah. that's what they're doing. You just may want to say like, Hey, I'm, because yeah, I'll do that sometimes like, Hey, I'm just, I'm on the dock here. I'm not like checking my email just so they know yeah. that I'm not checking my email in the middle of a right. Why am I looking at my phone when they're over there trying to come up with gold? I'm on, yep. I'm on the thing. This is where I work from. Okay. And that's, you know, that's getting more and more common, especially with younger riders. You're like, all right, that's cool. So I'm used to it now, but. But it's good that you say something so that you put it out there and don't let them silently think in their own head. Like, like this what story are they story? telling? Yeah. Like what he's, he's, looking at his phone and he's not paying attention to what's going on when really you're, you're talking about your lyric ideas. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'll, yeah, I just had that the other day. I was, I was pulling up a, uh, I was running with an artist and what inspired me for the song idea I was bringing in was an Instagram post that she'd posted like a month ago. I prompted a song idea. So I'm like pulling that up. Cause I want to set up like, here's my inspiration. She's like, that's me. I'm like, yeah, 
this is what you said that inspired. So I'm like looking that up or I'll be looking up the, the pulling up the lyrics and go, Hey, just so you know, cause like while we're chatting, you know, I'm kind of in screen and chatting too. I'm like, Hey, just so you know, I'm pulling up stuff for the session. I'm not just goofing off here. I'll go ahead mm-hmm. and just highlight that. Cause I don't, I don't, you know, this is my second right with one of the writers first right with the artist. And I don't want them thinking that I'm just not respecting their time and I'm somewhere else. Like what do you have other things that you need to, that are more important than what's in the room? No, this is about what's in the room. So mm-hmm. you do want to be there. It's like when uh, laptops and stuff, every once in a while, there's some quota riders. We just go, laptop check, <laughs> turn your laptop around. I want to know what screen you're on. You know, that kind of yeah. stuff. Just make sure you're present because that stuff is, it's a great, our phones and, and laptops and stuff can be great tools, but they can very much be distractions. And you want yeah. to be present in the rooms. Like there's nothing going on outside this room, you know, that's more important than the song you're working on. You know, hey, if your wife calls and you're expecting a baby any minute, check the phone. But in general, there's nothing going on yeah. more important than the song you're writing right now because that song could change your life. And when or you hit, like, if you, the if song you think about you could like, write, if you get back in the room, could change your life. Yeah, they, there you go. Right, right. Like, I was going to say, like, if you think, if you, if you listen to a bunch of song title challenges, you know, there's some where we, I drop the title and we just hit the ground running and it's like, an unbroken boulevard of green lights. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then there's some where it's just like, forget the red lights. It's like potholes the size of Texas, guardrails, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, detours, all this kind of stuff. But we keep working, 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 working. And they almost all of them end up coming back around at the end. Mm-hmm. But it's that moment. So I would imagine like in that moment, that's probably when you're most vulnerable to being distracted, when it's getting tricky. Wait, the uncertainty the, you know, you want a dopamine hit, right? Yeah. And you may get that on social media. And because I, I know that's when I'm more likely to just when I'm working solo or whatever, reach over to the phone because it, it's something's kind of hard, uncertain, a little dopamine hit, you know, because I'm yeah. not getting it because we don't have it with the song yet. It's easy yeah. when the songs rock and then you're like, I got all the dopamine I can use, you know, because yeah. stuff is happening. We're making progress. So you just want to make sure that you are there when you're there. I mean, sometimes, you know, I was working with the artist last week that, um, you know, was on his phone some and he's like filming some, but you know, like he's posting to his social media stuff, but like you're an artist. That's part of what you're doing. That's building. Yeah, it. Marketing That's, is part of your marketing yeah. part of the session. Thanks. I'm glad to be in your story. What's up? You know, and that's part of it. And that happens and that's cool. But you, you know, you just got to be, you want to be mindful of that. Um, once, you know, you get to know people and I, I got a buddy that's a hit writer, but also like does real estate and we'll be the three of us will be riding to meet him and, and this uh, other hit writer. And, and so we'll be doing stuff and, and he'll be on his phone. We're like, you know, we're not sure if he's doing lyrics, but it'll be a little quiet. Like you're selling the house right now, aren't you? You making more money <laughs> than we're going to make off this song right now. You just make more money than we're going to make off this song. Okay. <laughs> and you're like, and you have grace for that because the dude's a hit legit writer yeah. and he's, you know, has a track record, but you know, he, he does this other thing too. And so you have grace for that, but it's not day one and it's not goofy stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You really got to be hyper-focused on, you remember how we talked about that in terms of like a, a, a brand where like at, at the beginning as at the artist, like if you are, looking at the long leash, the long brand leash that artists that have been around for 20 years have. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking that you can get away with that as a new artist. No, you're mistaken. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, I remember Celine Dion showing up on a, I always use this example of people going to hate me for, but uh, she always shows up, showed up on a Oprah Winfrey episode in like a tight leather pants with a little rip in the knee and like a concert tee. Like that is, not how she looked uh in the first two records you know yeah. it was it was very the curtains match the carpet that's cool now it's colorful that she does that now you yeah. know but it's not that and so uh, yeah it's like it, it's almost like you, you tolerate that and you give grace and maybe it's even a little colorful when he's a hit songwriter yeah and you're glad to be in that room because you know he can handle all this business at once you know we can get the job done. yeah it's like we've had number one together room, Okay. You need to you need to make that you need to be very intentional about creating your brand as mm-hmm. a songwriter and as a partner as a songwriter in that room and somebody who can contribute. So you gotta be like all business at the beginning to get that callback. Heck yeah. 
Heck yeah. Um, so be there when you're there. If you're not there, when you're there, you can be annoying and you might not be there next time. Literally. Uh, number four, bulldozing. That's a way to annoy your co-writers, like running over the room, like no give and take. Oh, oh, there's give and take. I don't give it to you and you're going to take it. No, (laughs) there's that kind of stuff. You want, it's, you have other people in the room for a reason. You want to give and take. You want everybody to be happy with the song. You want to listen to their, what they have to say, take it in. Don't just plow over. Cause sometimes it may just take a moment to sink in. Maybe what they're saying is brilliant and you just don't get it yet. And you may need to let it simmer for a second. Mm-hmm. Okay. And cause it may, you may come back around to go, Oh, okay. I get what you're doing now. That's great. Or not, but you want to be respectful of the other people in the room. It's, um, Hey, they're on scholarship too. Kind of thing. You know, they're, they're mm-hmm. there for a reason too. If you don't respect them. What are you in the room with them for? Um, sometimes as a, if you're the junior writer in the room and you're trying to impress the other person, you can be too, kind of the bulldozer because you really want to, you really want to show up and show out. Like you want to prove your worth in the room, which can lead to you pushing too hard for your stuff because you want to get stuff in there because you want to contribute. Mm-hmm. But then that backfires because they don't have a good experience with you and you're not yeah. listening to their idea. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you're not like just bulldozing the room. It's a give and take. It's a partnership. There's no dictators in the room. I mean, if you're, if I'm writing with an artist, they are the dictator in the room because they're the client. Yeah. And the client is right. I may, you know, go, Hey, how about this? Or you think about this, but you want the client to have a good experience and get the best song possible, but without sacrificing a good experience in my experience. Mm -hmm. But if you're just a writer in the room or you're just a baby artist, you're not the dictator. You can say like, I wouldn't say this, you know, it's a different thing if you're the artist. Cause you can mm-hmm. say, I just wouldn't say that. And if we're writing for me, we don't need to say that. Okay, cool. Thank you for letting me know. First of all, thank you. That's awesome that you know that. But if I'm the writer in the room, it doesn't do me any good to bulldoze. Number five, um, pointing out problems, but new, no solutions. <laughs> like, no, yeah. I don't like that. Oh, you got any ideas? No. You know, I just, I'm just here to say no. You're just I'm, like, like negator in the room. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it sounds like a bad He-Man villain. Negator. Um, yeah, exactly. And I know sometimes that we get in the thing like, I, I don't know what it is yet, but that's not it. I mean, you know, we run into that and it's like, no, but I'm digging it. at least throw out something that maybe isn't it either, but like contribute more than just saying no, no, no. Again, if you're Craig Wiseman, if I get in the room with Craig Wiseman, he's just telling me, no, I'm just going to, I'm going to be that dancing chicken. I'm just going to try to make Craig happy because he's the hall of famer. Yeah. And I want him to have a good song at the end of the day. Cause if we come out of there with a bad song, they're just going to blame it on me. Cause they know Craig's awesome, but you don't want to be that person. You don't want to just point out problems, but have no ideas of solutions. You want to throw stuff out there, dare to suck. Even if you don't have the perfect thing yet, I don't know, but maybe it's feeling like this kind of thing, or I'm not sure, you know, don't just say no, 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 no. And then they, cause one thing that's annoying to me is when I get into the, I feel like I'm just in the game of try, trying to please one co-writer, trying to get in the, their head, what makes them happy. And they're not even uh-huh. an artist, <laughs> you know, and you get in that thing of going, I'll go with whatever. I'm just trying to get you happy with something so we can move on. I don't even care anymore. It's annoying. So sometimes I put up with it because we get cuts out of it. (laughs) Okay. But if I don't have that track record, then I'm just like, that was not fun. So you want to make sure that you're great. Point out problems. You do want to have a good flaw detector in your songs, but also you want to bring solutions to and ideas. At least what about this? Could it be this? Even if it's not like the final line, trying something, at least offering a potential solution. So those are five things that can be annoying in the room. Um, You ready to move to after the room? Yeah. After the right? All right. Trash talking. That's a good way to annoy your co-writers. Like if you trash talk them around each other or like behind each other's back, like say you're in a three-way with, you know, Bill and Susie and you're talking to Susie like, hey man, Bill really sucked in yesterday's right. (laughs) What was up with that? Well, Bill and Susie might be like good friends. And that means just kind of like, ah. Uh, and Susie's going to be like, what the hell does he say about me when I'm not around? Exactly. Because <laughs> you probably are, right? 
yeah, so you want to be careful with trash talking. Um, hey, Susie was there too. Susie probably realized if Bill wasn't, you know, we we're talking, you and Janelle and I were talking about pure country, you know, yeah. like George Strait. <laughs> we all know so and so was off on her time. Why do we got to talk about it? We were all there. We don't need to say it. Why does he even got to talk about it? You know, that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, it, if somebody was off, if they were, you know, just not like, they were just not, if they were doing all five things in the first list, hey, you don't need to go just bad mouth them. It can be frustrating, I know, but there's just not a point to that. Hey, if Bill keeps stinking it up in the writer's room, Bill just won't be back. Eventually. Yeah. You'll just stop inviting Bill. Uh, so word gets around, especially if you're talking about them like behind both of their backs or mm-hmm. something or about that kind of thing. You don't want to do that. Okay, so and you know what? Like, uh, there, it, I really believe this, but it's it's this is gonna sound a little hippie ish. But when you're bad mouthing anybody, like, even if they never hear it, let's say, mm-hmm. even if you could guarantee that they're never gonna, hear it, I mean, it's like it still puts like this negative vibe out in the universe, you know, yeah. this negative energy. And it just, I feel like there's a palpable difference. It's like the more you say it to yourself, mm-hmm. then the more you can't lie about being around that person you know what i mean like it just yeah. like this they can feel it man you know what i mean well, and so the more like you're, just you're really on the careful negative. about what you tell yourself too yeah because you're just focusing on the negative there yeah and we don't need to dwell on the on the negative so and especially yeah, if word gets around to them or really bad yeah forget that. so that that's one of the things after the right that can annoy your co-writers uh, another thing is ghosting after the session for like rewrites, rebooking, demoing, all that kind of stuff. Like I'm super present when I'm there, but as soon as we're out of the room, you'll never hear from me again, even if we love yeah. the song. Or because I've heard people say that like, oh man, I'm trying to hit them up about like, I got an idea for the second verse that would, you know, make it better, a tweak, and I never hear back. Or we need to get on, we just need to finish the bridge. And I never hear from them again. I'm like, what do I do now? Like, we're so close to being done. They're not getting back to me. So again, you can annoy your co-writers without even being there. You can annoy your yep. co-writers by not being there. Communicate, man. I know some people are just more flighty and it's hard to pin yep. them down after the room. We are talking about a couple of them with Janelle too. <laughs> oh man. And God bless them. I love them. But it's a, it's a bug. It's not a feature. You know, it's yep. a, it's something that the rest of their game better overcome. Yeah. It's something that you're going to have to overcome if that's you, if you don't get back to people. Cause you're like, you better really be good in the room or connected or something for me to put yeah. up with that. Cause that's annoying. Cause nobody likes having those loose ends out there. Right. Um, that's right. So you do want to communicate with your writers after the session, follow up, be available. If you don't like it and you don't want to work on it more, it's better to be honest and go, I'm just not feeling it. I'd rather just start something else. Or man, if you want to, if y'all just want to go finish that, that's cool. I'm not honestly just not loving it. If you just can't get back in the room, be honest at least so they can go, okay, we'll do this. I mean, they're still going to be frustrated, but at least it's a frustration with closure and they can move forward versus the, I'm going to just keep you in a holding pattern. I'm not going to let you finish the song. I'm going to let this keep festering because yeah, that's I'm super uncomfortable. passive aggressive. <clears throat> yeah. Or fear, or, you know, you just don't want to deal with it or you're worried about making them mad, but guess what? You're making them mad. Yeah. You're just not there for it. So I'd, yeah. I'd rather make someone be disappointed or kind of frustrated, but hopefully have respect from that person going at least, okay, at least they're being honest. They don't love it. I mean, it's just, you're not ripping on them. You're just like, I mean, it could be just a song that's just not working, you know? Yeah. And it's like, and probably everybody feels it. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Yeah. But don't, but don't, you know, and some people are willing to cut the song, bait. It's not about the writer, you know? Yeah. Like, and some people, you know, they're willing to cut bait on a song faster than others. Some are like, yeah. I don't get the sucker into the boat. I don't care. Because I yeah. need to do this so I can move on. Other people are like, eh, I'm not loving this. Let's just go on to the next thing. And so there's differences in writers, and neither is wrong, and neither is right. Yep. So that may just be a thing you figure out about your relationship. And they're like, yeah. okay, I'll go finish it myself. All right, cool. You know, just tend yeah. to me when it's done or whatever. <laughs> so don't go trash talking. Don't go ghosting. Also, if you want to annoy them, don't pay for your part of the demo. People yeah. love that. <laughs> 
Love it. Or be, be a slow pay on that. So you feel like a collection agency when you try to call exactly. them up. Make them track you down for payments. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that'll happen with publishing companies. You know, say you're writing with someone at a publishing company, you you know, they set up and say the session is through them or they, they find the, the guy or the girl to do the demo, whatever kind of version that takes. And so they'll normally cover it and they'll invoice you. So like if I get a demo through like Word, record, Word Publishing, whatever, they'll invoice me. Cool. Mm -hmm. I pay it. I get that mm -hmm. check in the mail quickly. So, so I'm not a problem, right? I don't want that loose end out there, but if you just never pay it, then they may notice that at the publishing company, especially if you've done it a couple of times going, Hey, John, you don't want to write with Brennan, man. He just never pays as part of the demo bill. So we're going to have to charge that to you. <clears throat> or that it's gonna go against How you your off the publishing company and and the published writer <laughs> yeah exactly and just two, unprofessional two, two birds with one stone <laughs> good job <laughs> that's i mean that's really like a slow clap moment you're like damn that was efficient <laughs> yes that was efficient and and no effort on your part whatsoever yeah yeah least Amazing. i could do literally and the least i could pay you know hey man Demos aren't cheap. If you're doing a lot of stuff, it can it can strap you. Um, but be honest about that. Be upfront about it, and let them know. It's like, okay, I'm strapped now. That is just a thing that it's like I just can't I can't do a demo. Oh well, I'm glad you mentioned that before we get in the room. Like, you know, unfortunately, we actually wrote a good song, so now we're faced with this conundrum. I'm going to have to float you on this one. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I guess best case scenario would have been, we wrote a bad song. And so this is not a problem. Great. That's the win in this is we write a bad song or a mediocre song. So, I mean, a lot of people will work with you. will figure stuff out. If you're, if you're up, if you're upfront about it, if you're honest about it, uh, sometimes it'll be like, Oh, you know, my publishing company will handle it or whatever. And I'll, I'll finagle it. It's fine. Or, or I got your part. And then you can pay them back or something, but you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're ahead of it instead of behind it. Like Exactly. You want to communicate, be respectful, be responsible. Yeah, you can pay them back. If you just can't do it right now, they can they may cover you. But if they know that going in, that's better than, yeah, having to track it down. That's finally, they're like, I guess I'm just going to cover them. But now I'm mad about yeah. it. Yep. So you want to pay your part of the demo bill. Figure that out. Uh, the other side of that is to demo without their knowledge or input and expect them to pay up. Like, yeah. I just got an invoice. I didn't even have the demo yet. Did we demo this? What happened? Why would I have a bill on yeah. my desk for like 200 bucks? Yeah. What happened? I demoed it. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, all right. So that's yeah. communication. It's a way to, uh, you know, if you work of your own demo and it's without you know, charging, incurring any costs, that's fine. But if you're expecting them to, to kick in on the demo, man, let them know ahead of time, like run it past them. Hey, I think this is cool. I want to bring, you know, I want to hire so-and-so to go ahead and, and do a track on it and sing on it. That's cool. And, he, and that's also a time to go any other bugs in this thing we need to fix before we spend money on it and kind of get in stone a little bit, or just, they may have somebody that's like better and cheaper. Who knows? Or that maybe. You know, worst case, their, their publisher is already demoing it and you, they didn't communicate with you either. And <laughs> now you're going to have, you know, twice the bills, um, which their publisher is not going to want to pay for. So I just want to communicate with them. So it's a good way to annoy your co-writers by just showing up with a demo and a bill. If you want to cover yeah. the bill, then that minimizes the the damage. But you want to talk about it first. And if, if it's a really good song and you just demo it and, and you're going to throw it out to them and you're going to pull that move, then if you come at it not expecting anything in return. Yeah. <clears throat> and they may love it and offer. And yeah. Like, oh, that's cool. I mean, I wouldn't expect nothing, but yeah, I'll take it from you. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. <laughs> then mm -hmm. it's like, <clears throat> wow. You know, it, it's how you serve that up, isn't it? That makes all the difference. Yeah. And also another end of it is um, like I was riding with uh, Tulane Summer and Michael Wilkes the other day. So Tulane rising artists, they're super cool dudes. Love them. Michael Wilkes, I've written with him and, and Matt Bailey, who you've worked with mm -hmm. some and, and yep. he, he produces and stuff. He does tracks. He's great. And, uh, you know, he did his homework and, and brought in some tracks. And, and so we finished and we had the bones of the demo and he's like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, do some more stuff. I'll get it to you by the weekend. And I was like, 
to thank you for doing work outside the room. Like I, I said this, like, thank you for doing that. I know it's more of your time. Thank you for doing that. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh man, it's, it's the job. I'm like, yeah, but you know, I've teased people before going, that's great. So uh, you'll go spend tomorrow doing the demo while I'm writing another song. Awesome. <laughs> you know, yeah. like don't just expect if you're writing with a track person or a producer that just assume that they're going to demo and produce everything because yeah. their time is valuable too. It may not be worth it. Like it may just be mediocre or just good. Mm-hmm. It may not make the cut for them. So don't be mad. Cause you just have to realize that may be a thing. So don't lean on them to make them do it. Cause you're taking time out of their pocket, which time is money and just expect it. So be grateful for that. Yeah. Like, Oh, it's good. You think it's good enough to put more time into awesome, dude. That's what I was aiming for. That's, that's great. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So respect the track person. Um, last thing is to hog all the credit. We love when you hog all the credit. We love when you play I our carry this whole room. It's hard work carrying all these people on my back. No, we love when you play out and don't mention us as co-writers. If you're doing a round, we love that. We love mm-hmm. when you do interviews and you talk about how you wrote the song and don't mention us. We love yeah. it. We love it when you make it sound like you wrote it by yourself. <laughs> mm. Pretty sure you are going to write the next song by yourself. Yep. <laughs> so, and there, you know, not that it's one of those things where it can be kind of annoying, you know, like I don't, to me, it's still a bonus if somebody mentions my name, in a, but like in writers rounds, mention your co-writers. It's yeah. a round. It's not a show. If you're doing a show, I don't expect you. Hey man, you go to the Tim McGraw show. He's not mentioning the Warren brothers and Tom mm-hmm. Douglas and stuff in the show. It's a show. It's a different thing. I do not expect that. I do not. And you should not either if they're doing the artist thing. Right. But if it's like a writer's round at the local or at live Oak or wherever, and people are going through and they're telling the story, whatever, give your co-writers a shout out. They may yeah. be fine and not care, but it's sure not going to hurt and they're going to like it. We go, Oh, I heard your name. So-and-so played that it's song. It's a professional gesture. It's a professional courtesy. And yeah, courtesy it helps. Is what I was looking for. Yeah. And, and it helps diffuse the thing of like, Oh, they're hogging all the credit. You know, yep. I, and of course everyone likes to have their name mentioned. Right. Cause if we're not up on stage, our name at least was for a second. And that helps yep. us, you know, so don't hog all the credit, man. When you're, when you're talking, if you're, if you're blessed that the song gets recorded and you're talking about the song to people and they're interested. Yeah, man, be generous with your co-writers. If you're, you know, about who did what in the room, guess what? It's all your baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter who did most of the work when you made the baby. What matters yep. is it's your baby and it's their baby too. And give everybody credit and it's better to be generous. And even if you kind of carried the room that day, it doesn't matter, man. They were awesome. It was great. Cause that song wouldn't have happened if those other people hadn't been there. And yeah. And sometimes give, you're going to be, be the generous. one that's like, just for whatever reason, two other people on a roll. Yeah. And, and your best, your best, your best play uh, is to stay out of the way. I yeah. just, you know, uh-huh. keep the sail hoisted, capture all that wind and be, and be taken down stuff. And, and yeah. you're going to be the least contributing person in the room that day uh but you you still get a third of the song you know like it's it's that thing it's going to even out over time it's best to be generous and and give your co-writer shout outs and that sort of thing because because it matters like you make a trend of that the co-writers are just going to feel unappreciated it's kind of what it comes down to like oh they never mentioned you that song thanks that that's awesome i worked hard on that song so that's a good way to kind of annoy people, especially if you're kind of going out of your way or even kind of the trash talking thing of like, yeah, you know, that was pretty much mine. They didn't do much, but you know, I pulled them across the finish line. Oh my gosh. <laughs> don't say that. Even if, this, you, by the way, unnecessary freaking information. The only thing that, that the only value that that information has is making your own ego feel better. And, and, yeah. and you're actually, it's not even like your ego's hurt. You're grandstanding at you that are. point. And, you're trying and to make yourself look cool. You're like acting like a douchebag. You sound like a douche. Yeah. You want to be cool. It does the opposite. It makes you look bad. Yeah. Brought to you by the makers of Summer's Eve. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> those are the uh, those are ten ways that you can annoy your co riders before or during yeah. and after the ride. So don't do those things. Don't show up late unprepared. Don't bail <clears throat> early and abruptly. Don't be unpresent when you are present. Don't bulldoze the room. Don't point out problems, but no solutions. Don't trash talk. Don't ghost them after the session. Don't skip out on your part of the demo build. Don't demo without communication and don't hog all the credit. I'm going to add two more real quick to wrap this up. Make sure that you're sober uh, and shower. Yeah. Hygiene matters. Shower. <laughs> don't stink up the room. Literally. Literally. <laughs> Little things, but it matters. Hey. Why not? Yes. If you need to hear that, you're welcome. And so is, and you're welcome to everyone who's going to write with you the next week hey, for, for hanging in there. Um, so those are 10 ways to screw up a, a co-write and to know your co-writers. I also have six ways you can make your songs more commercial. So we're all about the numbered list here. Uh, that's a free gift PDF download that you can get at six. That's the number six simple ways dot songwriting pro.com. That is six the number six, simpleways.songwritingpro.com. It's my gift to you. Just tell me where to send it. We email you the PDF. Um, and it's just some stuff I've learned from my time in the music business. Ways to kind of generally build songs that are more commercial. So, which is kind of what we're here for. That's what I got. There you go. I love it. I love it. That brings us to the end of it of the Killer Climb episode, y'all. This podcast exists because we want you to win. So keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. Bye.